Hey there guys, welcome to another video. In this video I will be showing you the HTC Shift 4G which was released on Sprint in January of 2011. It is a little brother to the uh, original HTC Evo and uh, these are some of the first uh, WiMAX 4G phones. This one is also a sliding phone and uh, what you end up losing when you get that slider is you lose a little bit of uh, the size of the screen because the Big Brother had a 4.3 inch screen, this has a 3.6 inch screen, and it doesn't have a uh, front camera. Uh, you have a power button on top there, and you'll get to see the uh, initial boot here. It has a sprint boot sequence. Now this phone, um, as I said, came out in January of 2011. Uh, it came out running Android 2.2 and had HTC Sense UI on top of it. It has a 800 megahertz Qualcomm MSM7630 uh, or maybe a original Snapdragon processor with um, Adreno 205 graphics. Has a whopping 512 megabytes of RAM. Uh, it had removable storage options, uh, and actually, as you'll see in a little bit, the phone will not let you take pictures uh, or do a lot of anything without a micro SD card. Uh, so it, I believe, came with a 2 gigabyte uh, card and can be uh, expanded up to 32 gigabytes. Uh, it has a 1.5 amp hour uh, lithium ion battery. Um, the screen has a PPI of 259.15. The back camera is a 5 megapixel. And in here you'll see that the uh, phone is uh, running 2.3.4. And that looks like the last version. And there's some of the hardware information that I just mentioned. Um, so the Wi-Fi also supports B, G, and N. Uh, Bluetooth 2.1 and EDR. And uh, one of the biggest things about this phone was that it supported uh, Sprint's 4G WiMAX, which was very short-lived. So this was during the time when uh, 4G was becoming the thing to do, and it's kind of interesting now that we're in 2019 and 5G and we're going through the same thing. So as you know, um, phones had 3G uh, prior to this, and... Sprint and Verizon are CDMA carriers, so they had a uh, slower 3G because it ran on EVDO. And uh, T-Mobile and AT&T had 3G, um, and they had it uh, upgraded to HSPA and then HSPA+, Plus, so they had a lot better speeds. And they used GSM networks. So, um, when the 4G thing came along, AT&T and Verizon and uh, AT&T and Verizon decided to go with LTE uh, for long-term evolution, so basically a GSM standard. And uh, Sprint decided to go with 4G WiMAX, which is uh, a little different, um, but didn't last. So basically, uh, Sprint's WiMAX went from about 2010 to 2012, and Sprint decided that that, it, that LTE was the way to go. And uh, so they ended up shutting it down in 2012. I believe it didn't completely shut down until 2017. Um, I am looking at some information here. Now, um, as I'm going through this, you can see just how the home screen looks here. Um, one unfortunate thing about this phone is that a lot of stuff doesn't work. Um, you can see the market is still on there. The place where it used to be called the market <laughs> back then. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Uh, let's see here. Uh, just uh, just looking at these phones is just so interesting to me to see how big. <laughs> and then the small screens that we had. Um, I mean, big as in like thick, you know, and 4.3 inches was big to us. When now we have, uh, you know, 5.8, 6.1, 6.5, even bigger phones than that. But, um, yeah, so the, the, it doesn't even pick up the 4G, uh, which is pretty, you know, obviously it won't pick it up, but I figured I'd try it. But this phone is, uh, it came with all the Sprint bloatware, 
it actually let me update some of the applications, some of the, uh, as you can see, voice recorder, weather provider, and all that stuff. I believe those are just HTC applications. So let's see, data fee warning. Yeah, I gotta tell us about it. Yeah, so there's a uh, there's an article here from 2010, talking about um, it was talking about LTE Verizon LTE clocking 60 megabits per second in the U.S. in 2010. So that's pretty impressive. And if we look now, uh, some of the 5G tests I've seen is over 500 megabits per second, which is absolutely insane. Absolutely nuts. So um, as I'm going through here, you're, you're just going to see me testing out different applications. I just wanted to show how they look. So you can type with the small on-screen keyboard. Um, the slider was actually really nice. Kind of made me miss those tactile um, actual buttons. And it was a decent typing experience uh, on this keyboard. It has uh, backlit keys. You have a little function key. And um, you can do your numbers, your you know standard uh, other characters. It also has the .com, at logo. You can even search and all that good stuff there. Um, and then right above the Q and W, there actually is a light for the caps lock. So that was pretty nice. So you can you can tell when caps lock is on. So. Um, this one, I mean, this, this, this phone is in pretty good condition considering its age. Uh, it's unfortunate that nothing really works on it. Um, as you go through here, you're going to see uh, just me trying to figure out what to do with this. Um, I was able to get it to update to the Play Store. I had to download an APK file that worked with this version of Android. Um, I then downloaded uh, or I updated some of the apps that were included and it just didn't really you couldn't do much so I couldn't get I couldn't get Chrome to download I could not get uh, YouTube to work I did download YouTube but I couldn't get it to work and it said it because it required play Google Play services so basically if you don't have a if you don't have Google Play services installed along with your Play Store you're not gonna get anywhere um, and this, this right here is teaching how to type with the keyboard, which is really nice. You know, phones don't come with this, this stuff anymore. They don't only come with these little tutorials to show you how to use them and that kind of thing. Um, I know with the iPhone, it has like a tips app, but you don't get like this kind of uh, tutorial when you start the phone, you know, kind of thing. Um, so you're kind of expected to figure it out on your own. So I think this is kind of cool that they had this back then. So uh, some of the other phones that were out at this time, so we had the HTC Evo, um, HTC Thunderbolt had come out on Verizon, so that was the LTE phone. Um, Apple had the iPhone 4 at the time this was released, and then the iPhone 4S came out uh, later that year. And that had the faux 4G, and uh, it's kind of funny now that we have faux 5G, <laughs> the 5GE that AT&T likes to tout. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I'm just going through a bunch of apps just to see what happens. Uh, Sprint TV, I'm not sure what that was. But I do remember it. Uh, I had Sprint maybe 2008, and they had that on there. It was like a TV service you would pay extra for. But yeah, just going through, just to look at the different options here. Um, there is a radio app in this version of Android, and it looks like um, if you plug in headphones, you were able to listen to FM radio, which is kind of cool. So, stocks. Unable to connect. Yeah, I got that a lot, especially on the internet browser. Now, I mean, this browser is way out of date, so it, it I, I guess it couldn't handle the different things. But when I would go to any website other than Google, it would just give me problems. All right, so here I'm actually um, sending the APK file for the Play Store to the phone via Bluetooth, um, which is pretty cool that that still works. Um, it took a little bit to send it over, but uh, once I did, I was able to get it installed, and um, you'll get to see that in just a second. 
So, all right, and here we go. It just says allow this application to basically take over your life and install. And what's great is that uh, once it's done, it you know let me update applications and um, it shows you the Play Store just as it looks today. So it you know it worked just fine. Um, so I hit open, and then in this uh, in this next clip, I go more in depth through the phone. So um, I'm doing a you know voiceover on this part, but the next part is me talking. So there you go, it works just great. So this phone comes with a very small amount of memory, I believe under a gig. So in order to even take pictures, you need to have an SD card to do that. So uh, in the settings here, I'll show you, hmm, let's see, Okay, so the SD card I put in here is two gigs, and the internal storage says available space is 150 megabytes. It doesn't show me any more than that, so I'm not sure. Um, I know it's a very small amount of storage that it has on there. Uh, so this is running Android 2.3.4, and what can you do with that? Not a lot. <laughs> um, now I did uh, get the Play Store to work. I had to update that manually. I had to download an APK to download to get that to work. But it does work, and it does let you download um, some things. Uh, one thing of note: there was a YouTube app on here, and uh, YouTube changed the the way that they display videos a while ago, so they only do HTML5, I believe. And uh, I downloaded YouTube from, yeah, I downloaded YouTube from the Play Store once I was able to get it to work. And it requires Google Play services, which are not compatible with this phone. And I'll show you that error in just a second here. Oh, okay. This is actually a little bit further than it got in the past, so. Popular on YouTube. Yeah, I didn't get this far before. Do we have, do we have trending? Like, what? If it actually lets me watch a video, I'll be really, I'll be really surprised. This is a message I get a lot. <laughs> yeah, so this is this is basically the issue that I come across. Check your network connection and system time, and the time should be set properly. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. So at the bottom here, you'll see you have uh, four buttons that are capacitive and they are haptic, which is nice. So you have a home key, a menu key, a back key, and a search key. So it's pretty nice. The screen here is 3.6 inches, so it is very small by today's standards, but uh, still very usable. And you have HTC's uh, Sense UI here, and this is an older Sense UI, but um, as you can see, you have the center here, it shows you where you are, which menu you're on. But it still doesn't run too bad for, you know, for this. Oh, well, that would make sense. 
okay, it, hmm. <laughs> it just showed 1980, so that could be something that could be an issue. Uh, let's try YouTube again because it just corrected itself. Mm, come on. Another thing that's interesting is uh, there was no multitasking on here. There was no multitasking on um, this version of Android that I can see. Um, I believe it's the same with the iPhone at this time. There was no no multitasking until uh, I was four or five. So that would have been about 2011, about this time, so. Okay. Will it work? No. Okay. Another thing that I, oh, what just happened? <laughs> oh, it just crashed. <clears throat> Yeah, that seems to be a common occurrence. The whole sense UI will crash. Yeah, that's a pretty common occurrence. Oh man. Well here, I'll show you the I'll show you the keyboard here. So the keyboard is actually pretty nice here. It is lit up. And you also have a function key, and everything in yellow or this greenish color is what would work with the function key. Um, so most of them are pretty placed pretty well. It types pretty nice. Like I was able to type on it without a problem. I did like that it had .com and a couple different things. You do have like a little smiley face here for like emojis and such. And you have a little D-pad down here. Um, your enter and delete key. And you can see it has a nice little brush. You got a little brush background to it. So it's pretty decent. Um, it's not like a super pop kind of slider thing, but so it does, it, it feels very, you know, secure. Like it's not gonna, you know, slide around or anything. Um, another thing of note is there is no front facing camera on this, on this phone. You know, the big brother of this one, the HTC Evo 3D, I believe, um, or 4G, I'm not sure which one it was, but it was the bigger brother of this one and it was a 4.3 inch phone. That one did have a front facing camera. Um, it does have a rear-facing camera, which is, and it does have a flash. It's 5 megapixel. It's awful. <laughs> I will show you how awful. It has this horrible tinge, and uh, it just doesn't look good. It does not look good at all. So here, we'll take a sample. That didn't look too terrible, but not the greatest. Not the greatest, so... I'll have to take a picture outside and see how that looks. But yeah, so the unfortunate thing here <laughs> is the Sense UI just crashed again. So this phone is basically not usable for anything really. Um, you can't really watch YouTube. Um, you may be able to store local files on it if you wanted to store music and that kind of thing. Um, if you had an SD card, you can take pictures with it. They're not great pictures, but um, as a phone, I don't think you're going to get much out of it. Um, this is a WiMAX phone, and Sprint no longer has WiMAX. They have LTE. Um, I just felt this was an interesting phone to look at because of that, um, because WiMAX was such a short-lived 4G, um, you know, that they... That... And just real quick, just wanted to show some of these pictures that I just took. So this was outside. Let me see if I can focus in here a little bit better so you can see. All right, so that was uh, some flowers outside. So I think it's the display, but it's just very muted. And here is my yard. And the quality's not bad, but then again, it is, you know, five megapixels, so it's not gonna be super. Here's the sky. And here's a little uh, kitty cat statue I have outside. So not, not terrible, but not great. But yeah, not bad for a, you know, nine-year-old phone.